my Nigeria, my woes, history is gone. The people of yesterday are gone with their values and social justice. We are left with nothing but infiltrated culture and a battered society. The history of our past, construed as the line between yesterday and today, has unprecedentedly become so wild. This informed Aralambos 1980 in his study, Sociology Teams and Perspective, to conclude that culture defines what is deemed as an accepted way of behavior for members of the society. Though such definition varies from society to society, but if misconstrued, it could lead to societal polarization and decline of societal values like our country is currently experiencing. Growing up as a child, we were taught patriotism and leadership. Some scholars believe it is that which Western leaders have extensively used to motivate public support for individual or political interests. Often, these interests and decisions come at costs that range from human to economic ETC. In Nigeria, the spirit of patriotism was initiated through lullabies and songs like that of the Nigerian anthem. We were forced to sing every morning at a crowd. Sadly, our founding fathers with dreams as tall as heaven, carrying with their shoulders high our national pride back in 1960, threw caution to the winds and pursued personal interest in place of national interest, turning our newly bettered country to a field of blood and bones. As I grew a little older, just like many other Nigerians, our thought years of the military incursion was again the bane of our societal positives. Alas, I was wrong. The emergence of democracy made more visible individualism and nepotism, which snowballed into massive corruption that later characterized the Nigerian public service and our democracy. Gradually, mediocrity got sacrificed on the altar of mediocrity, while governance became the inheritance of the rich, leading to the will of the people being procured from time to time with billion vans from politicians' mansions. The Ikoi bullion van on my mind. Today, our Hitato theater of dreams had become a field of scavengers, devouring the weak amongst us. Those who are strong amongst, amongst us turn the weak amongst us to their daily meal, making everyone fight for their lives. The Nigerian youth now able tools of distortion, commotion, and a kill at will in the hands of our political elite. October 2020, on my mind at this point. These ills, according to Plato, shall never end until leaders become philosophers and philosophers become leaders. Uh, to stem this in our polity, family as the first agent of socialization must be proactive in molding citizens by ensuring that parents do not care for just their family and friends, but must ensure our friends and family who take on political representative roles continually honor the social contracts that necessitated the emergence of governance in the first instance. When parents and families are committed to the well-being of their fellow countrymen and women, political participation then become products of genuine political contributions, service to humanity and love for one another as against both vote buying, political violence and political apathy that often impede our democratic advancement. Finally, Citizens must hold the government accountable and election outcomes must be a true reflection of the people's wishes and aspirations. The question I ask is if there is any future for this bleak looking junior. Our present realities have been a sad tale of the good, the bad, and the very ugly in Nigeria. It's, it's very touching, very emotional. Um, I think to start with, However, whatever struck out history from our uh, curriculum um, happened to be the, 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 one of the foundational cause of this problem because we have the nursery rhymes our children are learning today has no bearing on the beauty of the culture of Africa. Um, Nollywood, with mm. all due respect, I don't know. I mean, I, I just have a feeling that um, there is also some bit of um, manipulation somewhere. Maybe I'm wrong, but how come Nollywood movies project African culture, everything about our African heritage as bad? So you watch Nollywood and you will see, um, you will see the white man who is a priest who is coming to a village and he meets with the, with the Shongu, right? 
his aim will be to, to kill the, 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 the herbalist and then the herbalist wants to destroy. Why do they present that herbalist as an evil man? Because I know that while mm -hmm. they are the, they are, there is the evil part, these men originally, their goal was how to enter the bush, discover certain herbs that they can combine to bring cure, natural cure for human ailments. But Nollywood presents yeah. them as bad and now presents the culture of someone else, another world, as good. Maybe we need to go back there. My thoughts. Yeah, I, I, I think so from another angle, not in response to, to him, but the, the, the culture of, uh, 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 of expectation from the political leaders is, is a bit warped. I remember at one point when someone that I knew was appointed a judge and he went to his church to do Thanksgiving, and the first thing the pastor was going to ask is what was going to be his contribution to the church, and I should look around and pick up a project. As a judge, is he expecting him to be mining gold from his court. Mm. The, the truth of the matter is mm. we have a culture where everybody expects something from, from, uh, from, from whoever occupies a political position. Mm. Nobody is expecting you to go there and serve the people. Everybody is interested mm. with what they get from you. And I've been, I, I'm a politician. Mm. I, we never hide from that. I'm not, I do not belong to the mainstream political parties. I belong to one of the young, growing political parties. The name of my party is Youth Party. Now, mm. I, I, why people see you going for political office? It's not for service. People befriend you because when you get there, there's something they can benefit from. I, I have campaigned for people across different zones of Nigeria, and that is the thing you get from even your teaming supporters. When you go to the village, they welcome you. They even promised me a wife somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> because, <laughs> because, because they, they, they saw that if these people get to power, it will be proximity to power is power itself. Mm. That if these people get to power, it becomes our in-law, mm. then there is a direct access mm. to get benefit. And when that didn't work out, we got three votes in that whole village. Oh. So, <laughs> That's I think. So, 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 so we have, even as followers, we have bad culture, mm. bad political culture, and okay. we don't even vote. Okay, so I think I want to come in from his last question. And that is the fate of this union called Nigeria. And sincerely, I think that the fate of the union is very bleak. Now, Nigeria is a federation made up of people with variant cultures, customs, religions, and tradition, right? What it means is that for there to be peaceful coexistence in such a system, then there has to be justice, fairness, and equity. And that is lacking in the polity. In Nigeria, we're like in one part of the country, a group of people are allowed to slaughter and massacre a whole village, and nobody will be arrested, nobody will be prosecuted. At best, they get an invitation to the negotiation table, and they are rewarded with a lot of money and scholarships and all that. But in the other part of the country, when people protest peacefully, what you see is the government releasing the army to unleash mayhem on innocent people and maim people, right? We saw that in the NSAS issue. We saw that in the IPOB issue. And before IPOB was named a terrorist organization, what happened? They were unarmed civilians who had legitimate political aggression. But the government quickly declared them terrorist group and unleashed the army against them. But in the north, Fulani headsmen are here to be called a terrorist group. Bandits are here to be taught, called the terrorist group. And instead of attacking them, the government is looking for a way to negotiate with them and make them comfortable. So when government responds to violence with peace and responds to peace with violence, what is then the incentive to become law-abiding? Okay, so I, I, I would like to take, amplify something Samson said about our responsibility. So someone in your family goes into political office. Do you put pressure on them to deliver on their promises to the people? Or are you just trying to also just uh, get something from them for your own personal, uh, personal interest? So uh, I think it, it's part of the big problem we've had. And I know that today we're talking about values. There was a time in this part of the world that you needed to do things right because your family would disown you if you go the wrong way. But, but, but now yeah. it seems it's even, people do things, uh, do the wrong things 
they might defraud you because of your family. So, so those are, those, that, uh, it got me thinking. It really got me thinking that at times, the, some of the people that we see and we feel are doing the wrong things, that the reason they do it is even because of the family. So the family structure is not what it used to be. All right, so thank you so much for your thoughts uh, on this matter. I think uh, Omani is next preaching on the need to build a good reading culture after this break. <laughs> 